All right, just keep things simpler for me. Go ahead and uh, say your name and spell your name for me, Craig. I am Craig Hamilton, C-R-E-I-G, H-E-M-I-L-T-O-N. Perfect. So tell me a little bit about what it was like when you wrote out Hurricane Maria. Where were you and, and what was going through your mind as the storm came through? At first, I did not prepare for a Category 5 hurricane because the reports were telling us that it was Category 2 and we would probably get up to Category 3. So preparation for the hurricane was really not there for me and for most people. At about 6 o'clock, I heard on a radio station that we were going to get a Category 5. But already too late, I was at home. And I stayed home at about 6.30, I was asleep. The guy just dozed off. Yes, and I, and I fell asleep. My adopted son, about 7 o'clock, came and woke me up. Um, daddy, daddy, look outside. You know, look near the wind and so on and so forth. So I woke up. And all I could hear was wind right wind all over the place then i heard a branch fell on my house and just roll across it because at, at behind my house there's a lot of trees and it on the a mountain mm -hmm. and then i heard the windows starting to break packs 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 on the glass every room started to break so i took my my adopted son and we went to one location the first half of the storm nothing happened to the house in terms of the roof is good uh, the roof went but the glass began to break the second part of the storm then water started to leak in different portions of the house so i knew that the roof had gone Hmm. But it's not the roof, but the gun vinage under the zinc on the roof, but the plywood stayed because I have exposed rafters at home. And what I, what, what we did during this time is we tried to guard up as much as things as possible to the area where we were. Miraculously, only this area remained uncovered. Right? And, I, and I can show you some pictures from my phone. Only that area remained uncovered. And then I went back to sleep because I was so tired. And when I woke up the next day, I could not believe the amount of destruction around me. A landslide came down behind my house, almost covering the house. A big tree, as I told you, I have a lot of trees around me. A big tree from the back of my house fell on the neighbor's house and not on my house. Yeah. So when I woke up and I saw what was happening, I just knelt down and prayed and thanked God because I knew that if he, if he was not watching over me, probably I would not have been there. Because the, if the neighbor had somebody living in that house, the person had just gone, she was renting the house and the person had just gone, that person would have been dead. Yes, yes. And I will show you the videos to, to the pictures huh? to, to confirm my story. Oh, yeah. But I just want to say that it convinced me that I am doing something right for God. And it convinced me that I was protected during the storm. Yes. yes. What is the, the biggest lesson? I know Maria is still fresh in everybody's mind. What is the biggest lesson, takeaway you t you gained from this experience? Life changing. I, I think the, the biggest lesson I've learned is do not hang my hat on material stuff. I had over, I am a, a fairly young person and I have a lot of young people like me who have accomplished something in life. And we would always talk about our houses and our this and our that. You know, that's, that would be the conversation that we would have among other conversations. But what Mary has taught me is in the twinkling of an eye, all these things could be lost. Yes. And it also confirmed to me the biblical scripture that say, lay your treasures above. So it taught me one of the life changing lessons is live life, enjoy life, but don't get too hung up on the material things in life. There you go. Yeah.
How has the Massock Church helped you get through this time in life? I felt initially, and I can't blame the church because we all had an experience, but I felt initially the, the, the communication with members of the church was not encouraging. Mm -hmm. I got a few um, WhatsApp and mark you, communication was all down. Sure. from certain members right but afterwards I find that the church really did what it had to do mm -hmm. to reach out to its members mm -hmm. so I felt that afterwards I got called from the preacher I got called a preacher visit me only preacher visit my home because mm -hmm. he didn't hear from me for a very long time right so I think slowly in the process when things came back to a little normalcy was in the air right. then I see that the church was doing what it had to do okay. as well as when the relief came we ensured that everybody got the relief and everybody it was equitably shared among everybody so i think the sustenance and the purpose of the church i realized it not immediately after the storm but right. i told you we all had our own little it was thing a mess. to deal with <laughs> right but i could see the ideology of the church Good. His member, which are to his members, Good. who manifested after. There you go. Yes. Thank you, Chris.